Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Hello. Good to be here. Um, today, please come forward. Please, and the guys in the back. Today, I want to take you on a little, a little safari tour, so to speak, as we're closing up. Eh? A sort of safari towards the future of our landscape. Um, I'm showing you highways which chart at daytime, glow at night. I'm showing you fashion which changes in transparency when you become more intimate with someone. Yeah? Do I have your attention? Okay, very good. Uh, 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 um, so most of all, we know, and that's I think why you're here in Miami as well, we know that the future is about new technologies, creativity, new ideas. And so I want to show you some examples of where it goes right, eh? how we can experience this new world. But maybe before we dive into that, um, I want to start with a very simple, very maybe banal question to you guys and girls, um, which is about this notion of innovation. Do you know, do you know why you cannot tickle yourself? Um. Hello? <laughs> why can you not tickle yourself? Exactly, you're expecting it. So that's quite awkward. Eh? So when I tickle myself, my brain is sort of programmed to, to ignore, eh? to filter, to decode. But the moment you tickle your neighbor, guys, hello, the moment you tickle your neighbor, <laughs> you're a horrible audience, you don't do anything. <laughs> okay. Anyway, if you would tickle your neighbor, if you would have the guts to tickle your neighbor, uh, 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 which you can blame me for, then you would experience something, the neighbor then. So that's quite interesting. So apparently we are programmed as human beings to have certain type of emotions that we cannot feel alone, yes? We need each other to explore, to learn, to evolve, to upgrade. And I think that's an incredibly interesting topic, also for Miami, eh? because the Miami, the horror of Miami is, is that you just become this incredibly boring, generic resort where tourism only rules, yes? And that's why eMERGE is so exciting that you actually invest in new ideas, in creativity, to become a center of knowledge. You are not just consumers, you are makers, yes? But before we dive into the future, I want to start with an example of when it goes wrong, how it can go horribly wrong, although you have new technologies. This is a movie of people on the escalator for the first time in their life, two years ago in Uzbekistan. First time people experience an escalator. <laughs> Whoa. And, so, and so we see in this new world that we can have all the best technology out there, eh? high tech, but if it's disconnected, <laughs> If it's disconnected from us as human beings, we get confused, we get disconnected. And I like this, you know, you just such a doubt. There is no innovation, nothing changes. So it's about technology. Here, look at that, he's putting it on again now. <laughs> That's exactly what I would be doing. So if we are curious, <laughs> and realize we just have to let go. We just have to let go, guys. Anyway, I can show you two hour uh, footage of this, uh, but I, you're, you're not allowing me, so I think. So, <laughs> so we're gonna do it anyway. But uh, uh, um, here you see, ladies and gentlemen, how important the, the value of design is, of fine tuning all these elements into make something that people feel connected to. And I think that fascinates me a lot as a maker, as a designer, as an architect, as an entrepreneur, as a Dutch guy living below sea level. Eh? We live below sea level, it's quite weird, but we are, yes. So in a weird way, we already have this hybrid relationship between nature and technology. It's within our DNA. And so when the city of Rotterdam, a harbor city, commissioned me to revitalize an old gray dark tunnel, which you see here for passengers, I became inspired by that and using technology as a tool to make places feel more alive. Creating June, hundreds of fibers which brighten according to the sounds and the motion of people walking by. <laughs> yeah. 
So although it's high tech, filled with sensors, microphones, etc., etc., it's not about that. It's about that the landscape is not static, but is open, reacting to your intuition, connecting people. Yeah, you see it here as a mediator. And we filmed this from a distance, so people do not know we are filming them. And it was really funny, you know. People became intuitive. The landscape became playful. There's no manual, there's no explanation, there's no sign telling you what to do. You make the landscape and the landscape makes you. <laughs> and sometimes it's a bit scary, but that, that's also part. So, so here we realize that make landscapes which are open. Also a funny thing that happened is this, um, we did not anticipate that, but after a week, um, June became a sort of hotspot within the Netherlands to have your wedding photos taken. Apparently there are like these websites where you can look up online hey, where to take the best honeymoon picture in the world. And June was number one hotspot for several months. So suddenly this old gray, a big dar dark tunnel was invaded by wedding couples who would make a lot of noise and June would, would react to that. And they started to send me these kind of pictures which on one hand are, 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 I think, horrible and complete kitsch. Uh, 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 but on the other hand, it's beautiful. It's their moment, June reacts to them. And, and that, that's what it is about in a way. And it's also the notion of tactility. You know, I don't believe in 10, 15 years we will be looking at computer screens so much as we are doing right now, as, as you are doing right now. Uh, 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 sorry. <laughs> I'm, 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 I don't know, I, I'm in a weird mood today, so get ready. But so technology is jumping out of the computer screen and becomes a part of the things that we wear, the roads that we drive on. There will be screens, but less, I hope. So the tactileness of, of LED, of interactivity, is, I think, incredibly important. But also the notion of wearables. This is a project we launched three years ago, fashion, making garments which change in transparency according to how intimate you are with someone. So based on the heartbeat of the wearer, the material changes on a microscopic level from white to transparent. So the more, how do I say this politely, uh, the more she likes you, eh, the more you reveal of yourself. Like a, like a digital goose bump. Eh? So they think, like, <laughs> So here, fashion is not just something with a bloody logo on it, but it's an expression. It's, it's connected to what you are doing, actually. And we launched this, you know, because we found it interesting, because we wanted to create things not with a download button, so to speak, and make it more sensual. Made a series for uh, people who wanted to have one. We're also working, actually, now on a suit for men, for guys. Yeah. <laughs> But that works in a very particular way, uh, because that was a bit of criticism, eh? that people say, ah, oh, yeah, fashion, lady, technology, yeah, yeah, it's for guys only. So right now we're making on a suit for men, but that only becomes transparent when they lie. <laughs> <laughs> and we give it to some politicians or bankers or whatever, whatever you think is suitable or... We can, we can be democratic about that. Anyway, it's selling horrible, by the way. But so the, the, the notion of, of making something intuitive and making it personal is interesting. And the fun part is it starts artistic. It starts as a dream, yes? But I think that's where all innovation starts. You know, It doesn't have the return of investment Excel sheet straight away. But it triggers people. It tickles people. And we got a call from uh, Lacoste. And Lacoste, you may know, it's this bit boring French uh, crocodile brand, eh? Yeah, okay. what? Can I say that? Yeah, okay, <laughs> anyway. Uh, um, and, and Lacoste hates the future, I love the future, but they hate it because they are being copycat like crazy by India, German, China, and then it falls apart. People think it's uh, the Lacoste, they call them, they complain, etc., etc. So they spend three million euro per year on lawyers to defend, eh? to, to, to resist. And we met with them and says, okay, okay, maybe you should reverse that thinking. Maybe not spend three million on resisting, but spend half a million on exploring, yes? 
And in the beginning, they look a bit like, hey, we're, we're, we're not sure, and we don't understand this movie, et cetera, et cetera. But two years later, it was a true story. Two years later, they gave us a call, and they said, ah, that's interesting. We are thinking now about the future of the polo shirt, and we made a movie sort of inspired about our first meetings, which I want to share with you. It feels so fresh, just like a summer breeze. I don't know what it is you do to me. You cast a spell and I can hardly breathe. I like this so much. Yeah, thank you. And, and so that's really, really fascinating. Eh? This, this very boring, a bit traditional company suddenly invests in the future. Some of these things are not possible, eh? like the sleeves, and, but the other things, like color changing leathers, light emitting paints, you know, give me 10 whiskeys, a pizza hotline in eight months, and whoa, you know, we're, we will get there. So, and also their business model changes. Eh? They're not selling textile anymore, but they're selling information. They're selling personalization. So you see in a new world, which realizes old systems are crashing in terms of economy, in terms that waste is gonna be super expensive, in terms of what actually can we add value to, eh? how can we add value, you need to be creative. It's the only way. And that's interesting that companies start to realize that more and more. That did not happen five years ago, but that makes today, right here, right now, a very, very exciting moment. And I think we should explore that much, much more. But also here, the, 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 the public domain. This is one of the first sustainable dance floors we created. I'm aware that I'm here in the area of Latin America, so it's sort of... Um, uh, something which I've always, when I visit uh, Brazil and, and, and places like that, which this temperamento, this movement. But I also realized that when I was in a discotheque, everything was in motion, everything ta 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 ta, but the building was mute. The building was immune for that. And it's weird because when you're on a bicycle, your dynamo actually charges, gives light, yes, generates light. Can we not apply this thinking to a dance floor? producing a dance floor with, which moves and therefore creates electricity. Well, yes, of course we can. Toyota, a sponsors of green design. Every time we take a step, we leave energy behind. What if we could capture this energy as a clean source of electricity? Dutch architects Dole are developing the technology to capture the energy of dancers like these, then using it to power the club's music and lights. Certain materials produce electricity when squeezed. This is known as the piezo effect. So a dance floor can become one big generator, turning every movement into new power. In fact, any vibrations we make can generate electricity. Even the rattle of the tram taking you home at the end of the night. And that was very interesting. Yeah? So we made the first one, this is 2008, um, where each module like this, it's 65 by 65 centimeters, produces 20, 25 watts, moves eight or nine millimeters. So sustainability suddenly was about doing more, not less. It was about activating, about engaging and we use the power that we generate to charge the LED or the DJ booth or an energy meter to show how much you're, you're actually uh, realizing. That was sort of interesting and we worked with the notion of um, interface eh, because we're not gonna show numbers because you're in a discotheque, that would be incredibly boring. Uh, 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 so we work with mirrors which are not using uh, energy 
and lets to create this notion of depth. So the more energy you produce, the more uh, deeper you go, so to speak. That was quite exciting. A very simple, effective way of realizing, like Marshall McLuhan once famously said, eh, we at spacecraft Earth, there are no passengers. We are all crew. Yes? And this is something he said quite a while ago, but it's been in my heart for many, many years. How can we create networks where we feel connected, where we feel engaged, where we feel activated? And it starts with design, and it starts with thinking in a new way. And also this kind of things. This is me. This is me in my studio. Yeah, so I, I have the easy job. Uh, <laughs> Fortunately, I'm surrounded by a great team of scientists and engineers. So this is how can we combine nature and technology into one. So what you see here is actually based on the heat of your breath, at the 37 degrees. It folds open. So it's a, a bit technical. Yeah, OK. Anyway, it's, it's a mylar, a high-end plastic a polymer, laminated on top of each other. If it gets warm, it expands. And this chair does it right now. This building actually does it as well. And when it gets cold, it shrinks again. Very simple, very effective way of getting movement into the city of tomorrow. And we started to apply that to a special place in a church. This is in Lille, a city not so far away from Paris in France, where government spends an incredible amount of time, money, love, and energy on this kind of cultural heritage. You know, it's their tradition. They love it. But the problem with these kind of buildings throughout the whole country is, what's the problem? Sorry? Wear and tear. No, 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 no. It's more frustrating than that. What's the problem with these kind of buildings? Beautiful historical. Hard to heat? No, no, no. It's beyond that. They don't let you modify it. They don't let you modify it? No, I'll help you a bit. Exactly. Nobody goes there. They're disconnected from reality. No, it's a true story. So the mayor, a spicy left-wing uh, lady, called me on the phone and says, you have to make, you have to make something to make this place feel more alive. And, and of course, I could say, not say no to her. So we built the first Lotus Dem Dome from them. This is inside the dark church. Can you dim the light a bit and tune up the volume? Fourteen thousand visitors in four weeks. We got like love letters from sixty-year-old chicks uh, saying how much they loved it. Anyway, so so uh, it and that's what I learned from this. By placing something of the future, we start to relook at the past. Interesting, eh? Because when we talk about innovation and new world, there's a tendency to forget about history. We say, oh, okay, history is blah blah blah, and we focus on the future. No, 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 no. You know, you should connect. You should design the missing link, in a way, between the past and the future, between the new and the old. And that's when it becomes real. Then it becomes part of your new tradition, yes? That's an interesting one, I think, also for Miami, where you have this sort of incredibly hybrid place eh, of, of, of trade and of different type of cultures. What can we learn from that to inhabit about the future of tomorrow? And so the notion of the, of the network, in a way, the notion, oops, the notion of the network is very important. Um, um, I am 80% of the things I'm doing right now, I was never educated for, yes? 
So that's the new hybrid. That's most of the jobs you were educated for will not exist in 10, 15 years. You know, get ready for that. So what can we learn from that? Well, you do that by placing a factory, by placing a dream factory. So this is my dream factory in Rotterdam, in the city in the Netherlands. You see it there in the center, where we actually have this old glass factory renovated, where my team of 10, 15 people, scientists, designers, project managers, are working together to make these ideas come true. We have to think like a network in order to survive, yes. And the weird part is, is that We don't only look at technology and develop new materials, we also look at nature. Because nature is very, very good at that. And I'm not saying we should place trees everywhere and put grass on the roof, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 I, you know, what we do, I'll show you inside view, what we do is One look at these, these movies subterranean cities of anthills, like. of scientists who are out there to explore. The amount of cement required is extraordinary. For three days, they kept pouring until 10 tons of cement had disappeared down the tubes. So they were curious, yes? Very important. After they were a month, curious. they begin the excavation, led by Professor Louise Forci. This is a complete crazy genius guy who is interested by ants. Everything with ants, he loves it. Yeah. I don't know why, but yeah. It takes weeks to uncover the secret megalopolis of the ants. With the help of mechanical diggers, the scientists remove tons of earth. At last, they begin to see the structure of the city-state. There are subterranean highways connecting the main chambers, and off the main routes are side roads. Bizarre. The paths branch and lead to many fungus gardens and rubbish pits. So in a way, they have air conditioning. Huh? Basically, that's what he's saying. Yeah. The tunnels are designed to ensure good ventilation and provide the shortest transport routes. Everything looks like it has been designed by an architect, a single mind. But of course that isn't true. This colossal and complex city was created by the collective will of the ant colony, the super organism. Yeah. If you want to see more, Google Ant Hill Concrete The structure BBC. covers 50 square meters and goes eight meters into the earth. Yeah. In its construction, the colony moved 40 tons of soil. Billions of ant loads of soil were brought to the surface. Each load weighed four times as much as the worker, and in human terms, was carried a kilometer to the surface. So, wow, eh? wow. When I look at myself as a human being, and, and you as well, we're such brutal human beings, eh? No, but we are. The way uh, the amount of kerosene I use to travel, to fly, the amount of waste I produce, you know, we are brutal human beings. We are. And then you look at this, you're like, holy shit, you know, how do they do that? You know, it's so ingenious. What can we learn from that? Well, it starts to learn from, to think like a network. Eh? Miami, certain type of scale. Netherlands as well, also nice, but not super, super big. But if we are aware of the place we are within the network, we can do new things. So create places where you can experiment, where you can learn, where you can make mistakes, um, start a company, invest in new dreams, that's very important, but also make alliances with people who are outside of your comfort zone. Yes, that's very important to make new things happen. And I'm showing you this picture because for me, this is the beginning of innovation. You see that guy on the right? who looks a bit, uh, mm, I'm not sure, Mr. Rosegard. Uh, <laughs> this is the main the director of Heimans, one of the largest infrastructure companies in the Netherlands and, and Benelux. And that was interesting. This is the beginning, in a way, 
of new ideas, of building smart highways. And you know, although we come from different disciplines, eh, their world of the kilometer, my world of the millimeter, my world of the art, their world of like the construction, no nonsense, eh, blah, 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 blah. still we have a sort of, it is a West Side story eh, in a way of two <laughs> gangs who don't really belong to each other, eh? but they still share a common love, which is innovation, which is making new things. They, because existing business are crashing, so they need to invest in order to survive, like every good company should do. I, because I want to move beyond the white cube of the museum eh, and to update reality. And so here you see us on the rooftop deciding that we should work together the coming five years, my team of designers, their team of craftsmanship people, and make new things, make the smart highways of today. And I want to show you two examples which are realized in the last, what is it, eight to 10 months. Um, glowing lines, this is one of the first roads we realized which developed a coating which charges at daytime and glows at night. To move away from all these cables and wires and maintenance and LEDs or lamps and all that, blah, you know, let's make it more natural. Um, and this is how it looks like. You can come into the Netherlands and visit this every night uh, for free, yeah. if you like. Shirt moving. So the road was dark before, unlit, dangerous, and the lines, they're sort of like a body. And they keep you safe. They help you to navigate. And, oh yeah, there's also a very beautiful bus. Paints which charge at daytime and glow at night, and make landscapes which are energy neutral and, on the other hand, just incredibly beautiful. That is something I like to call techno poetry. And, and so that's very exciting because suddenly the industries which were disconnected before, eh, art world and road industry, <laughs> and it's like they didn't talk, you do something new. It's not, it's not easy. You have to have guts, yes? You have to invest in new ideas, but you create new things. And also here, government wakes up. This is our minister of infrastructure um, who walked around with a smile like this big for four hours and says, oh, okay, we have like two or three more projects which we would like you to, to do this. And so everybody was happy again. But also, we had a lot of problems in the beginning, problems that you and I did not even imagine. So for example, um, there's a law, a European law, which says that every line on the road has to be white. I didn't know, <laughs> how should I know these kind of things? So the first project, a license permit was denied. <laughs> no go. And we're like, shit, you know, like what should we do? Whenever we have the opening, we, should, we want to make this happen. So in the first prototypes, we actually, it was an idea of one of the infrastructure people, smart guy, and what we did in the first pilots was putting a sign 50 meters before the glowing lines saying, watch out, road marking not present. And then you had the glowing lines, and then it was allowed to, to show these kind of things. Can you imagine? Yeah. And okay, of course, that's not the long-term traditional way of doing things, so you have to go to the ministry, explain that old rules maybe are not um, fitting anymore, and a good government is also open for, open for that. Maybe they don't have the budget to invest everything, but they should allow that kind of experiments to happen. So that what, that's what's happening here. That's why I like this picture as well. That, 
you know, it's also about creating that kind of activation in a way. But also, suddenly people get excited about roads. It's really weird because everybody always focuses on the car. Yeah, the car can be sexy, glamorous, billions of R&D, every year a new model, beautiful. But suddenly people get excited about their landscape again, um, 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 thinking about creating places which are unique. These kind of things pop up. あの、一部の地域で、あの、スマートコーソクOkay, to be honest, I still have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> I hope it's okay. But anyway, so uh, while some projects are matured eh, and can be purchased international, some ideas are still in, in product or prototype phase. For example, here where we're making highways which charge electrical cars when you drive over them. I mean, I, I think Tesla is a great company and Elon is doing magic, but putting 425 kilo batteries in one car are you insane? You know, that's like old school thinking for me. So here, because suddenly you make a new invention, you make a new design, road industry and car industry, they start to communicate. The CEOs they meet, that never happened before. These industries were also disconnected, although their product was literally hitting each other, yes? So by thinking further away, focusing on the second or the third horizon, you attract new sectors, that's how you get the capital to make these kind of things happen. And that's the way to, to grow and still having your first horizon, paying the rent and make people happy, etc., uh, keeping maintain them. And also what we're doing while this being, is being launched international, learning and doing new stuff. This is a request from um, the Van Gogh, the Van Gogh Foundation. As you know, a famous Dutch artist in the Netherlands. Uh, 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 also in Japan, China, people love it and they take the plane, they go to a museum, they take pictures, you know, they, they cherish it. But there is a place nearby Eindhoven, which is a, a city in the Netherlands, where he lived and he worked in 8083, 8085. But although a lot of people go there and take pictures, etc., etc., there's also a big problem there, which is similar to the church, there's not so much to see. <laughs> because the artist, of course, died, so it's sort of uh, useless in that way, uh, with all the respect. And the paintings that he made are hanging in great museum with sign, please do not touch. So yeah. So the city, the province, the foundation came to me and says, Dan, can you make something to make him feel more alive again? Making it more safe, but also this cultural tradition. And so what we did is going back to these smart coatings, which we redesigned and redeveloped, chopping them up in little pieces, Looking at uh, the famous paintings he made later on eh, in France, the Starry Nights, also again eh, the love for the landscape, and what I, you know, what I did then is sort of connect, in a way. This is this is this is how my brain works. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep on doing this for an hour and see what happens. <laughs> This is what we made in the end. A bicycle path through the area where he lived and worked, charging at daytime, an interpretation of the history, a blink towards the future of making energy-friendly landscapes. And it's fascinating, you know? This guy, it starts with a dream, then you have to make, eh? you have to build. It's like raw people working. They are all working, by the way, eh? it's really... They're all active. <laughs> anyway, in the end, you get a result something like this. Freely available for you guys. Uh,
it's just like we're laying on a story. Nobody, thank you, nobody expected that a bicycle path would become world news. But it did. It was really weird. CNN, Reuters, BBC, all oh, the path, uh, CNBC, all these people sort of jumped onto it. You know, it became crowded. It became the place that first you go to cinema into the big city with your, your date. And then afterwards, you sort of go here and take your walk of light or walk of love or whatever you want to call it. There was actually, it, it, it got so worse that I was in the studio and the phone rang and I picked up by accident. There was a local on the phone and he says, Dan, I have a complaint. I'm like, oh shit, okay, here's a complaint. Okay, I'm hearing you. I have a complaint. I don't see the Van Gogh bicycle path anymore. I'm like, I don't understand what you're saying. Is it like stolen or is it gone or is it sprayed over or like, did they take it away? What, what happened? I don't see the bicycle path anymore. I'm like, I don't understand what you're saying. And he said, yeah, they're walking around so many Chinese, Americans, and the German and Dutch people. I don't see the bicycle, I don't see the bicycle path anymore. So, so I, I laughed and hang up and uh, basta, end of story. But so, <laughs> yeah, hello. Uh, 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 but it sort of shows that if we have the guts to connect between the pragmatism and the poetry, between the beauty and the bullshit, yeah. between the fantasy and the Excel sheet, we can make landscapes of the future. And don't get me wrong to conclude, don't get me wrong, it's not easy. Yeah. You are in for the long run, I hope, because it's not easy. It's not like the mayor calls and ah, and then oh. Yeah. It's like there's a lot of bullshit to get a little bit of beauty. And you got to enjoy that. You do, otherwise, you know, you can just become a resort and that's also difficult, but anyway, you get the picture. So what I noticed um, in innovation that a lot of people say they want the new, they want the different, they want the next. But there's also this weird tendency to, when you have a new idea yeah, and you, you present that to your boss or your wife or your colleague or your boyfriend or whatever, there's this weird tendency to reply every good new idea with two words, starting with two words. Guys, come on. How do people reply? Yes, but. Yes, but. Oh, you know that all way too well. <laughs> so not how much, is it allowed, blah, blah, blah. Yes, but. And I thought that was so incredibly frustrating for me. So I became a bit like a bit gray and dressed way too black, etc. It was not good, you know. I started the second studio in Shanghai. I'm like, ah. But uh, one day I realized I have to do something with that. I have to make this part of my creative thinking because it's there. So let's use it. So we designed the first yes but chair. So every time somebody says, yes, but it's too expensive, or it's too cheap, or it's not been tested, or it's already there, or it's too fast, or it's too slow, or it's too ugly, or it's too beautiful. These 5,000 reasons to not do something, eh, although there are also five reasons to do something, but anyhow, we designed the yes, but chair, which looks like a normal chair, but it has a little voice recognition element in it, hidden, and the moment you sit on that chair, and you say those two horrible, creative, destructive little words, you get a short but pretty intense little shock on the, the backside of your body. <laughs> <laughs> and um, um, yeah, that works. Yeah, so that's <laughs> some clients left. Uh, okay, uh, it is what it is, but some stayed. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Dear Miami, dear friends, I'm wishing you all the no yes buts in the world. I think you are in a very fascinating time, going from somewhere, working towards to, with the history and the future in mind. You are not consumers. 
you are makers. And I'm really looking forward to work with all of you to see how we can push that to a next level. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. That was awesome. It's everything I hoped it would be. Thank you. So, no, 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 no. You said, uh, uh, guys, come on, we are makers. I kept it short, so we have time for some questions. Otherwise, it's just me talking, which is not good. Is that okay with you? Yeah, we have about four minutes. Yeah. Let's go. See, I kept it short. Yeah. <laughs> questions, come on. You have to learn questions. There's one How right to learn there. any questions. They're very important. There's a question there. Could you walk to the microphone, please? You have a weird imagination. <laughs> I like, the question was like, if, if you're at Starry Night and your, your clothes become so transparent, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll leave it to your vivid imagination. Uh, <laughs> next question, yeah. <laughs> Please. Can we have a mic? Uh, uh, the mic is, we have a mic station right here. Oh, can you? Either run here or get the mic there. Take this question while okay, we'll get back to you. Yeah, please. You're very creative and probably can figure out any um, solution, but there there must be some jobs you turn down. For sure. And why? Uh, what kind of jobs? Yeah. And what was the reason for turning them down? Thanks for your question. It's it's really important because I realized as well you have to say no many times to get a good yes. Yes, it's really true. You have to select. So one is, I don't want to decorate, I want to reform. So I want to be part of some kind of transition. I don't want to make stuff only nice or beautiful, that would be boring. So I want to change something, I want to update. And second, I'm looking for people, clients, contacts, whatever, colleagues, who are interested in process, not just product. Yes, so I can learn, I can update. And, and it also has to do with a personal obsession. So for example, um, I'm taking my four minutes. Uh, can we have the keynote back? Right now, this is a, a photo of a happy designer. Uh, why is this designer happy? Um, a jellyfish or a firefly emits light, yes? It does that because it has luciferine. It has no battery, it has no solar panel, it has no energy bill. What can we learn from that? So right now, we're taking the luciferine of a firefly and merging it with plants. So we teamed up with a biological biotechnology group making plants which glow at night. <laughs> so we can make landscapes, hallelujah. So it starts with an obsession, it starts with a great team of people, and then drop it and see what happens. Yeah. So, yeah. Please. Okay. Well, you're very strict. Is he always that strict or is it just me? Oh yeah, okay, sorry, yeah. I'm Dutch and I'm always not, very polite. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Don't worry, please. Last question. Last question of the day. Yes, I'm, fin uh, I'm fascinated by the illuminated pathways. I was just wondering if the, the illumination would degrade over time or will it still illuminate as equally as bright in yeah. the future? Well, duty cycle 10 years. Uh, we did the first path in the Netherlands, so piloting now several ones abroad. So I think within three to five years, you have a sort of matured project. But we are actually in Miami looking for locations to make these kind of energy-friendly, beautiful landscapes. So uh, I think we can answer your question quite soon. Yeah. All right. Thanks. <laughs>